Okay guys, here's page one of the unit four review packet. So let's start from the top. It says classify the following triangles as equilateral. Remember that means that all three sides are the same. So three sides are the same. Isosceles means that two sides are the same. And scalene means no sides are the same. And we talked briefly about um, isosceles really means at least two sides are the same, but for all practical purposes for this class, it just means that two sides are the same. Um, so justify your answer with work. So we need to start with this first one. We want to figure out what kind of triangle it is. The first thing we need to do is figure out what these points are. So y here is at over 2, down 2, so 2, negative 2. x here is at over 4, up 2. And z is at um, backwards 2, up 0. So we need to find the distance between these sets of points. So why don't we start with, um, I'll do from z to x. Okay, so the distance for that is going to be the square root of, remember it's a, dis, a difference of the x's and a difference of the y's. Why don't I write the formula at the top where I've got some more room. So remember the distance formula, and you have to memorize this for the test, okay, is a difference of the x's and a difference of the y's. Okay. So I'm actually just going to plug right in. So this says a difference of the x's. So if these are my, this is my thing, I'm going to do a difference of these two x values. So negative 2 minus 4. And a difference of the y. So those are the y coordinates. So 0 minus 2. Okay. When I simplify that, this is going to be the same as the square root. So this is negative 2 minus 4. That's negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. And that's the same as 6. Oops, sorry, I'm not done. <laughs> Plus 2 squared is um, 4. So the square root of 40. Okay, we've done from z to x. Let's do from x to y. I start with a difference of the x's. So 2 or 4 and 2, so 4 minus 2. Then I do a difference of the y's. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 minus a negative 2 is the same as 2 plus 2. 4 squared is 16. So that gives me the square root of 20. Okay, we've done from z to x, from x to y. Let's do from y to z. Okay, the difference of the x's is negative 2 minus 2. The difference of the y's is 0 to negative 2. Okay, this is 4, negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16. Remember, a negative squared is always a positive. 0 minus a minus 2, it's the same as two, uh, 0 plus 2, so 2 squared is 4. And that gives me the square root of 20. So you'll notice I have the side lengths as square root of 40, square root of 20, square root of 20. Well, since two sides are the same, that means my triangle is an isosceles triangle. Okay, now I am going to run out of room over here, so I'm going to just do these in my head really fast, um, and then I'll let you guys check your answer. So I'm going to start with the distance from A to B. I'm going to get 6. Um, I think this will be the square root of 13. And you can be this fast too one day. <laughs> So those are my three side lengths for this. And so since two are the same, this one's also going to be isosceles. Okay, let's do it again over here. Now on your paper, you need to show all of this work that we did here for these, but I just want you to see the answer so that you can check them. Um, I hope these are right. <laughs> Okay, so for this one, all of them are different. So this will be a scalene 
triangle. Now, um, for both honors and regular, a good portion of your test is going to be multiple choice. Definitely for regular um, honors, we're still finishing your test up, but um, these two isosceles, this is scaling. So on a test, you'd probably have these options, and you pick which one it is. So just make sure you do your work carefully, um, and make sure you have all of this work for these two problems as well. If you need to do it on scrap paper, just do it um, and staple it to the back of your review packet because we will check it in class. Okay, let's keep going. This next section says, use isosceles and equilateral triangle rules to complete the following congruency statements. Justify each response with a theorem. So let's look at our picture. We know that AC, it says, okay, AC is the same or is congruent to AD. Here's AD. So it's asking, what else is it congruent to? Well, take a look. These three angles are the same. If a triangle is equiangular, that means all three angles are the same, it's also going to be equilateral. All three sides are the same. So we're going to say that it is also congruent to DC. And we can say that because the triangle was equilateral or equiangular, therefore it's equilateral. Um, so that's actually our converse of the equilateral triangles theorem. Okay, since we had all three angles, we can go backwards and say all three sides are the same. That's going to be our converse. Okay, now we have that angle ACB. So ACB, so they're talking about this angle right here is the same as angle B, they're congruent, is congruent to something else. Well, if we look in this triangle, we know that these three sides are the same, which means that these three angles are going to have to be the same. So that's going to be um, angle B, A, C, B, A, C. Okay, since we knew all three sides were the same, we concluded that all three angles are going to be the same, and that's the equilateral triangles theorem. Okay, let's look at our next picture. It says that segment AB is congruent to what? Now, you can tell because of the arcs that's the same as BC, but we want to look within one triangle. So um, let's ignore all this over here. It's saying AB is congruent to what? Well, notice these two angles are the same. We know if two angles are the same, the sides across from them are going to be the same. So this one and this one. So that's also going to have two tick marks. It's going to be congruent to B segment BD. Well, since we knew two angles in isosceles triangle were the same, we made the conclusion that those two opposite sides will be the same. Since we're concluding about sides, it's going to be the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, now it says angle C is congruent to what? Well, now that we know that this has two tick marks, let's look in this triangle. These have the same sides which means that the angles opposite them will be the same. So if angle C, we know that's going to be congruent to angle D, but we can't call it angle D because that has multiple pieces, so we're going to call it angle B, D, C, or C, D, B. Okay. Well, how do we know that? Since we knew that two sides in the triangle were the same, we concluded that the opposite angles were the same. That's going to be the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, let's keep going. We're going to use isosceles and equilateral triangle rules to solve for the unknown variables. Okay, let's look at number eight. Well, what do we know about number eight? We know that all three sides are the same. Well, wait a minute. If all three sides are the same, that means all of their opposite angles will be the same. So all three of these angles are the same. But we also know that all three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if they're all the same, we'll just divide it by three and we'll get 60 for each. So we know that this is going to be 60 because it's an equilateral triangle. This will be 60. Therefore, this is also going to be 60. So my equation is just going to be that 2x plus 10 equals 60. I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Okay. Let's look at number 9. Well, number nine, we know that all three of these angles are the same. Well, we already know that if all the angles are the same, that means all of the sides are going to be the same. So since we know that this side is 24, we know that this side has to be 24, and we know that this side has to be 24. So there's our, two, our equation. So I have that 2x equals 24. Well, if I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 12. Here I know that 3y has to equal 24, and if I divide each side by 3, I'll get y equals 8. Great, okay, let's look at number 10. Ooh, we've got three variables. So let's see if we can figure out how to solve them. Well, we know for certain that since these two sides are the same, the sides opposite them will be the same, but knowing that x is the same as z right now doesn't really help me. What does help me is the fact that if I cover all this up, 
we can see that I have a linear pair right here. And we know that a linear pair is going to add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to just write right here. We know that z plus 135 is going to equal 180. Well, if I subtract 135 on both sides, I'm going to get that z is 45 degrees. Well, wait a minute. We just said if two sides are the same, those angles across from those two sides have to be the same. Well, we know that z is 45, so what does x have to be? Yep, x has to be 45 degrees. Okay, we're getting close. We know these two. We need to solve for y. Well, fortunately for us, we know that the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So I can say that x plus y plus z equals 180. Well, we already know that x is 45. We know that z is 45. Okay. That tells me that 90 plus y equals 180. If I subtract 90 on both sides, I'll get that y equals 90. Okay, so there's our answer to number 10. Okay, looks like they're starting to get a little bit trickier. So let's see if we can solve this one. We know that this angle down here is 50. We know that this is x. We need to solve for x. Okay, well this angle is 50 degrees and we know that this side is the same as this side. That means that the angles opposite those congruent sides have to be the same. So if this is 50, the angle over here needs to be 50. So this thing right here is also gonna be 50 degrees. Well, we need to figure out a way to get to X. We're in this triangle, we need to find a way to get to this triangle. Well, if I cover up all of this and just look at the middle, you'll see that x is a vertical angle with this thing here between the two red ticks, that angle there. So if we can figure out what that angle is, if we can figure out what this is, those have to be the same because they're vertical angles. Well, we can solve for this angle right here, so that's PQT. So if we want to solve for that, we're going to say that 50 plus 50 plus something is gonna give me 180. So if I wanna solve for PQT, I wanna figure out what this is. This plus this plus this should be 180. Okay, so I have 100 plus something equals 180. Oopsies. <laughs> well, what's that blank gonna be? It's gonna be 80, right? That's what I need this angle here to be um, so that these three add up to 180. Well, we said if we know what this is, we know what X is gonna be. So what I also could have done, I just could have called that X. So I would have this plus X. So we know that x is going to be 80 degrees. Okay, number 12. We have two isosceles triangles. So remember, this triangle has these two sides that are the same. This triangle has these two sides that are the same. So let's just look at the top triangle first. Since these two are the same, we know that those angles opposite them will be the same. So since this is 45, this will be 45 degrees. We also know that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I can say that x plus 45 plus 45 equals 180. Remember, we're just looking at this top part. So this plus this plus this, those add up to 180. So I get that x equals 90. Okay, but we're not done. Now we need to look at this bottom piece. We still have an isosceles triangle. This tells me that this angle and this angle have to be the same. So since this is y, this has to be y. So y plus 120 plus y has to equal 180. Okay, so I have 2y over here. I subtract the 120 over and I get 60. That leaves me with y equals 30. Okay, we're almost done with this page, number 13. Ooh, okay. Let's see. Why don't we look down here first? We know that this is this box here means 90 degrees, and we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So I wonder if we can find a way to solve for n. Well, remember, since this is isosceles, that means that the angle across from this has to be the same as the angle across from this side. So if this is n, this is also going to be n. Okay, well look, now I have something in each of the angles of my triangle, so I can say that 90 plus n plus n equals 180. Well, that's 2n. If I subtract the 90 over to that side, I have 90 left. 
that means that N is going to be 45 degrees. Now, let's see if we can use that to help us up here. I don't know about you guys, but I see this arc right here. Do you see that arc anywhere else? Yep, I see it right here. That means that those two angles are the same. So if this is N, this is N. But N is 45, so if this is 45, this has to also be 45 degrees. Well, I notice that this triangle is also an isosceles triangle, right? So whatever, so if this side's the same as this side, this angle has to be the same as this angle. So if this is M, this also has to be M. Well, now that I have something in all three of these angles, I can say M plus M plus 45 equals 180. So I have 2m equals 135. I need to divide both sides um, by 2. Now here's a trick I use for dividing in my head. This 1 here represents 100. If I divide 100 by 2, um, I'm going to get 50. This 3 represents 30, right? So if I divide 30 by 2, I'm going to get 15. So so far I have 50 and 15, that's 65. And if I divide um, 5 by 2, I get 2.5. So from the 1 I get, I half that, I get 50 plus 15, so 65 plus 2.5. So 67.5. Okay, and those are my answers for the front page. So stay tuned for another video.